What is going on everyone? Welcome back to the vlog. Today, we are finally putting the turbo on the 1HZ trip carrier. As you guys should know, I've been running this thing NA for two years now, and it's, it's served me well. Surprisingly, it's served me very well. Haven't had any dramas with it. There has only been a handful of times where it has actually needed more power. On the road, I found it really not that bad. It's not great, but it wasn't bad. Um, it was bearable. Pretty much, I've got to catch you guys up on a few things because I've already pulled it all apart and I've got a whole kit here. Um, I'm just gonna take a little bit of time to explain what I'm doing, why I went with what I went, um, and just the situation. So, pretty much this motor, I don't know its history. Um, the car is on 508,000 Ks. Um, I don't know if that motor's been reconditioned or if it's a new one or if it is just the stock one. You, just I don't know um, it still runs quite healthy as I said I haven't really had any issues with it I've taken everything off except I haven't got the exhaust off yet because my slider's got built around the exhaust and now I can't get the exhaust off so I'm gonna have to cut that one luckily the new one comes in multiple different pieces but I took the intake off to well one put new gaskets in there but I took it all the way off because I wanted to just clean the carbon out of it but it's actually not that bad probably could have gotten away without taking it off but I took it off now, so I'll, I'll clean it up anyway. Um, there is many ways to do that. I don't have any of the right stuff, so I'm just gonna make do with what I've got, uh, which is gonna be a lot of this build. This is by no means a professional job. Um, I'm not a mechanic. I'm just running off the advice of people who know what they're doing. They're coming here and telling me what to do, but then I'm doing it because I'm trying to learn. So if I say something wrong, forgive me, because um, I'm learning here. Uh, this is gonna kind of be all over the place because I'm I'm just working on this after work. Eating up a lot of my time and getting the videos out has also always eats up a lot of my time. So if some days I'm really tired, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm kind of tired at the moment. I'm trying to learn so I've got my mates who they come over, tell me what to do, watch me do it and advise me. I'm getting there. I didn't film it all, pulling, pulling it all apart. I didn't actually intend to do this and then I just kind of just did it. It's a little bit of a pain, you gotta take all the fuel lines off. I'll film it going back on and then if you wanna take it off, just do it in reverse. <laughs> so the turbo kit is just spread out on the ground down here. Pretty much I bought it second hand off another Troopy bloke. He had this on his Troopy, he's just changing his whole setup, which is good because I got everything pretty cheap, which is the reason why I went with this kit. So it's a, it's a DTS turbo kit. I know, I, I know there's lots of other things you can go, but this was cheap. It came straight off the same car, and I can just put it straight on the same car. It was on his car for 10,000 Ks. Got top mount intercooler, the whole exhaust system. We swapped bonnets, so I've got one with the scoop. Um, all the lines, all the fittings. It's half put together already. It's gonna make life super easy. And as I said, it was cheap. So, this is what we're looking at. Here's the top mount intercooler. Now I am gonna actually eventually get a fan to run on that, so don't worry about that because I'll explain that when that video comes out. We got the manifold with the um, turbo already on it. It's just, it's nothing fancy, guys. I know there's lots of people who wanted me to like go crazy with this, but that's that's just not, it's just not what I'm after at the moment. Um, I'm just after a bit more power without, without being excessive um, and causing damage to the engine. Um, I know people have bad stories with turbos blowing up their 1HZs. The plan is to keep the EGTs cool. Um, oh yeah, it came with all the gauges that I need and everything as well. Like it's literally the complete set. So we got all the lines that we need, the catch can. Um, this is the exhaust all, all in pieces. Got a few things in there. Um, that I haven't actually shown yet. It's actually a Mad Fab airbox. So just running a pod filter in there. So we actually have a custom airbox as well, which we needed to make the old Mad Fab snorkel fit because it comes out there, the stock one comes out in here. Um, and as you can see, trying to run a four inch down there, not gonna work. The intercooler, I will be putting a fan on that because the aerodynamics of this car are atrocious. Pretty much you wash it and then you drive it from the car wash and the water just sits on the bonnet. Like there is no airflow there. So that's what we're doing. It's a DTS turbo kit. Uh, that's why I went with the kit, mainly because 
the guy was like, hey, it's going to take off my car right now. I'm selling it this much, and it's literally everything, and it wasn't on the car for all that long. Something that I'm going to do tonight, which I wasn't planning on doing tonight, but I've been dreading it, basically, when I took the exhaust manifold off, there was already two broken studs on this side. If you follow me on Instagram, you would have seen that. I got all the other studs out, no, no worries. Um, I got all new studs to put in and everything. These two here were already snapped off. You can see from the from the gasket here um, that it was leaking a little bit. So I've got to get them out. I have been soaking them in WD-40. I know that's not like gonna fix it, but I figured it it might help. From my understanding, drill in the center, hit an easy add into it, and pray. Uh, I think I think that's the go-to. So this whole thing is gonna be difficult to film. I don't normally film installs. Um, I prefer to just work on the car at my own pace. And also because I don't like giving out mechanical advice because I don't know what I'm doing. I'm not a mechanic. I don't have experience with any of this stuff. <laughs> so, um, and at the same time that I'm filming this video, I'm working on the rear locker too. There's a lot going on pretty much and I'm trying to keep videos going and work full time and do all this. It's a lot. Basically gonna be here by myself most of the time. So if the filming gets a bit crappy, I'm sorry. <laughs> Pretty much, I'm just gonna try and get this in the center as much as we can. Luckily it snapped off kinda flat-ish. Not gonna lie, it ain't in the middle. All right then, I just got a, a drill bit that is slightly smaller than the easy out that I wanna use. I actually pushed the stud in, so I'm just gonna assume that that's a good sign. And supposedly just take your easy out, hit it, and then hopefully turn it the other way and the stud comes out with it. That's that's the idea anyway. Turned off the camera because I was just messing around and now I'm one size up. For some reason I couldn't find the exact size to fit that, so we're on the shifter. This is the kind of quality that you're gonna expect from this. It also appears that it's coming out. Alright guys, this battery's going flat. As you can see, I actually got one out. So, thank god that's one down, one to go, halfway there. Doesn't seem like they're actually stuffed or like stuck in there, so I'm pretty confident I'll get the next one out. Because the threads look perfectly fine, they don't look seized at all. They look pretty new actually. That's a good thing. Um, so I'm going to get this next one out, hopefully, and I'll update you guys afterwards. Alright, so it's a little bit later now. Uh, that second one uh, didn't go smooth. Um, took a bit of messing around to get, but the dogs have officially been gotten. So thank God they're out, I was a little bit concerned about that. But they're out now, I'll start cleaning this thing. I've heard that the best way is to soak it in oven cleaner. Um, I don't have oven cleaner. I just have like degreaser, all that standard kind of stuff. So I'm just gonna do that. Um, it's not terrible, so I'm not really too phased if it's not immaculate. As far as I can tell, there's no big build up anywhere. Which I didn't really think there would be because there is no EGRs on these cars, um, the Australian 1HZs don't have EGR. Um, I don't really have a tub either that I can do it in. Because I kind of used it to put oil in it. <laughs> yep, this is what it's like when I work on cars. I don't have a lot of things. <laughs> and I spend my money on turbos and lockers and stuff instead of buying the correct tools, which would help me a lot if I bought the correct tools. Alright, I just emptied out this container. It's not ideal, but it's just going to keep the mess in there instead of there. Yeah. Pretty much, yeah, I'm just winging it. Uh, just degreaser, try to clean stuff out, brake cleaner, that kind of stuff. Um, and then I think tomorrow I might smash it with some, some high pressure water, and then some WD so that it separates with the water and make sure it is really dry. Drier than dry. I would take some studs out. I, got a, I had a 50 50 ratio with the studs on the intake manifold. Half of them came out, half of them didn't, uh, with the nuts. <laughs> As you can see with the uh, exhaust manifold. This is the whole of the exhaust manifold, so all the studs came out with, it, with the nuts, um, which is nice. I guess it's better than snapping. I'll just, I think I might just do it, and I'll just let you know what worked and what didn't work and whatnot. All right, it's the next day. Um, everyone, this is Mitch over here. Other Hello. Mitch, different Mitch. <laughs> He's the one who's gonna be helping with a lot of this stuff, and he might explain a few things for you. But pretty much on the intake side, um, I just put in the studs that were missing and taken off the gaskets and whatnot. Actually, I haven't shown you the intake yet. Alright, so here is the intake, much 
cleaner than what it was. Pretty much I just sprayed it with lots of degreaser and brake cleaner in there and then I just took it outside and smashed it with some water and then sprayed some WD-40 in it and then blew it all out with compressed air for a while and then left it to dry and um, it turned out good. So pretty happy with that. Mitch is just putting in all the studs and the exhaust manifold and new gaskets. Yeah, we got new new gaskets for everything. Genuine ones. Yeah, genuine ones. <laughs> I think all up the studs, nuts, and the gaskets from Toyota cost me about $350, I think. Which is easy because Toyota is literally about one minute down the road for me. This is an exciting bit because hopefully things will go back on the car today. Right, so we just got the intake sitting on there, just one bolt holding it on. Um, it makes everything else look very, very dirty. Mitch has actually just ducked home to get a saber saw because I don't have one. Pretty much I've got an issue it's still running the stock exhaust, right? Except for, I just changed the muffler at the rear. Pretty much the stock exhaust is in three pieces. And um, these sliders got built around said stock exhaust. And I cannot get the exhaust out. So we're just gonna have to cut the exhaust up to then get it out. Cause to get this slider off, you gotta take the rear bar off to get the rear scrub bars off to then get the sliders off. So it's uh it's a big job to get that off so pretty much we'll cut that one out and then the new one is in a lot more pieces so I'm hoping that we will be able to get that in um, if not we're just gonna have to buy the bullet and take everything off I believe I don't actually have to take the rear bar all the way off you can just kind of undo it and then it like tilts and then you can get the rear scrub bars off but I'd rather not do that this stock exhaust is worth nothing because the muffler has a massive hole in it that it blew in it somehow. So that's worth no money, so I don't really mind if I cut it up. All right, so Mitch has just cut out the exhaust, and this is what I was talking about. She's good. This is the reason we're going turbo. Yeah, it's the whole reason. <laughs> <laughs> this, like, is barely even connected. I know you want to smash it. <laughs> yeah, so the muffler was not really muffling much. I don't reckon it'll go. <laughs> That's how you do a muffler door. Alright, I know we didn't really, well we didn't film any of it. That's very difficult to film because you can't really see anything in there. But the whole of the intake side is all back together. All the fuel lines and all the other stuff you had to take off like the dipstick, power steering, reservoir. And we put some, what's this line called Mitch? It's the heater line which goes to the heater tap. Um, they've literally just teed into it and put a just a braided hose into it. Nice coolant feed for our turbo. Ooh, very nice. Ooh. This is what I mean by like the kit was all together and makes it easy. Like we just put that in, the fitting's already on it, it's all the right lengths. Um, it makes it very simple, doesn't it? Very, very simple. And it literally like, it's already, it's been like that for a while. So it has its own natural kind of uh, t turns and bits and bobs. So you can literally just like sit it where it's going to be sitting and it just wants to be there naturally. It's not you bending it around something and yeah. it still wants to continue straight. This is like that, so. literally probably the most plug and play turbo kit you could get. Yeah, cause it's already been. Yeah. Like, <laughs> <laughs> um, so we're gonna do that bit that doesn't really help. That bit, the fun bit, the thing that we're here to do. All new studs and new gaskets, genuine. Other heater lines off as well from the other side. So it goes in this, uh, the passenger side and comes out back out this side and goes back into the block. Um, we've just taken that off to make it easier to put the turbo and manifold on. And then we're gonna put the uh, modified one that we got with the kit. If I had been proper organized, we could have nearly turned this on tonight, but yeah. I still need to spike the sump which is something I'm not excited about doing. It's very agricultural. Doesn't exactly sound like fun. I probably won't, after tonight, probably won't really touch anything till Friday. Today's Wednesday. <laughs> I don't know, when did we start this? Uh, like last. Tuesday last week. Yeah. Something like that. It's been slow going, but that's all right. That's what happens when you can't just work on it during the day. And then you decide to go away for three days. Seems like a union job. <laughs> So my end kind of twists. Give it two-piece manifold. There we go. Lovely. There we go. That's the the huge whirly boy. That's so small. But 
But it's on there. My one HZ is panicking right now. <laughs> it is sweating. It is sweating. <laughs> it is sweating. <laughs> it's excited, <laughs> but it's nervous. So it's just all done up. Um, I know I'm not filming heaps, but it's kind of impossible to film. Can't tell you how happy it makes me that everything just fits up. Oh. Lines are the right length. So good. Already zip tied together. Just always make it easy to put it on. Oh. This thing's dangerous. Yeah. I can't do anything about the intakes, unfortunately. Oh, uh, yeah, I didn't update the, the vlog on that, did I, about the intake? Because I have that custom airbox by Madfab, doesn't exactly line up the best. So I'm gonna have to get old mate Darvis, hopefully Darvis, or whoever can help me out within the next week to try and fix that pretty much. Right now this is coming off on that angle. I need this to do the exact same, but going that way. So we're gonna get that fixed up. Hopefully Darvis can just do it. Um, <laughs> haven't even asked him yet. On your Darvis. On your Darvis. But if you were to have the stock, stock, airbox um you'd be sweet it's a lot easier with the stock airbox but this one should make cooler noises this is our top mount it's cooler here it's in used condition i don't know what condition it is on the inside so i may as well give it a clean out see how it goes um i'm hoping it's not too bad but you never know either way it's going to be nice and clean in there and the reason for cleaning the inside of your intercooler and then rather than just spraying it is you get oils in there and just spraying it with water isn't going to get that out so all you need to do this is just some degreaser, um, some metho, and some kerosene now, and a tub as well. Um, I didn't have a smaller tub for this, but that will do. If you're going to do this method with like metho and stuff, give it a few days to dry. Make sure that it is fully <laughs> dry before you put this thing back on your car. Okay, now that that little disclaimer is out of the way, let's get into it. Um, as you can see, there is actually a bit of an oil patch on this side, so I am. I'm a, a little bit, little bit concerned about that. Anyway, it'll be all right. So I'm just going to start spraying and then we'll soak it in the other stuff. Now we're literally just going to, since we've coated the outside, literally get in here and just spray around in here. Now this side doesn't really work as much, but Give it, a, give it a hit. So I'm lucky that I can sit mine like this and I can actually fill this up and it's just gonna sit there. Um, I'm gonna do a 50-50 mix of kerosene and metho. Um, some people go kerosene, let it soak, pull that out, then metho. But I'm just gonna do a 50-50 mix and then I might just put in a bit of metho on its own and it will be happy days. we we'll just let it sit for about 10-15 minutes or so. I'm um, just going to pour it out. There's already some black sitting around it. I'm glad I did that. Just straight up black. Um, well, I'm very glad I did that. I'm just going to sit it back in there. Pour just, just metho in there, let it sit for a little bit and then pour it out. All right, I've just let the metho sit in there for a little bit. Pretty much you'd hope that that's clean when it comes out, which it is. I am going to be punching a hole in my sump. Not really any videos of, that show people doing this full process. It's just come the time to send it through. So I'm not taking the sump off because I've got this endless air set up, right? on the car and the mount comes down and under the sump and back up. That thing to get that on was one of the worst experiences I've had working on this car. It is terrible, you have no room for the bolts, you have no room to get any kind of tools in there. It took a fair few hours just to get it on there and that was on a hoist. I don't have a hoist. There was also no front diff in or anything so you had way more room and it sucked. So I really don't want to take that off because I'd have to take that off to get the sump off. If you can get the sump off and you have the time, probably do that but apparently this is a good way to go about it now this is the hose that i'm using it's a three-quarter hose you need your fitting now this is important so you can go whatever size thread you'd like really um that's a three-eighth thread there just so that it gives me leeway so if i stuff up i can <laughs> go to half but this is a tapered thread i just bought this from pertech 
tapered thread so it won't actually thread in all the way and it'll get really tight and therefore making a better seal than a non-tapered thread. Now to go with your tapered thread, you're gonna need tapered taps. Make sure that you have the right ones for the right threads. So you can't just use a normal tap, you gotta use a tapered tap. You need to put some sealant on it. So this is the one that um, Pertec recommended to me. Um, I'm sure there's plenty of different ones out there. Um, I just kind of went in, told them what I was doing and said I needed something, they said go with that. So I went with that. Onto the actual spike itself. This has been doing my head in. All these diesel shops and, and whatnot, they have these long ass spikes that are the right size. And I, for the life of me, could not find where the hell they get them from. If you know in the comments, please comment below so that other people can find them because I have no idea where to get it. I spent such a long time trying to look and find stuff. Couldn't find anything. The only thing I found that seemed similar was a garden edging spike, but it wasn't the right size. So what I've gone and done is I have a center punch. What we're gonna do with this is punch that straight through, straight through the sump. Now, you can't just grab whatever center punch you want. It needs to have this point on the end. It needs to have that point so that when it punctures into the sump, it will flare it out instead of just, you know, bashing through it. Pretty much all the way through is the right size for the tap that we want to use. Please, if you know where to get those spikes from, put it in the comments. Um, you'll be helping a lot of people out because there's like 40 forums asking where to get a spike from and no one has an answer. All right, so I haven't even filmed this, this night at all, but it's 10 p.m. We've had an absolute nightmare of a night. As you can see, the oil return line is on. I'm not gonna tell you how we did it, but have a look at where it is. Have a look at where the chassis is. Have a look at how much room is in there. And then just use your imagination, because uh, you don't want to know. I don't want to know. It's probably, probably up there with one of the worst things we've ever had to do on a car. Oh, most certainly. Yeah. <laughs> it wasn't just a little bit hairy going. It was very hairy going. It was just going. It was <laughs> going. It was not pretty. But it's in there, and we're actually very confident that that is going to seal. But yeah, just use your imagination of how that went in. It involves everyone's least favorite method plus more. Because the chassis is in the way, so there isn't enough room to get any sort of hitting device in there. So yeah, that took about took about two hours. It took two hours to get that in. Put a hole in the sump. People do that in thirty seconds. Thirty second job. Two hours. I don't know if that's just a 78 series thing because people with 1HZs can do that way easier on like 100 series and, and 80 series and whatnot. So I really don't know. Sort of unexpected and it sucked. But anyway, we're on the final length of the turbo build. Yeah. Mitch is putting the oil return feed on. Oh. Well, you've got to clear a heat shield first. I had Taylor Darvis over here tonight having a look at the intake. So he's gonna modify that and I'll show you guys that when it's done. Well, we're gonna put new oil and filter in it. The, I can't even think, the intercooler has to go on, which is not hard. We'll just put the dump on because we wanna try and start it tonight. That would be, that'd be incredible if we can still start it tonight. But we'll see how we go. I might just have to update you when everything is on. It's now 10 to midnight. Um, yeah, it is. <laughs> 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 it's back together except the exhaust is we just have the dump pipe on the, on, on the exhaust which might I add was a mission again but we got there I'm not sure which one was more of a mission there the sun the sun this yeah, definitely sure. the sun this is what we're looking at we got the old intercools on the old turf ski with no intake on the exhaust is literally just coming out right there I don't know if the camera picks that up the battery's on charge because it was flat. Because I definitely didn't turn my fridge off when we started this ordeal. We got oil. We got oil filter. I think we're good. We replaced the heater tap because I broke yep. it. <laughs> Vacuum line that goes to the boost gauge is currently plugged up with a screwdriver. Mm -hmm. You want to repump the uh, fuel pump? Yep. We'll have to bleed these injector lines up because we've taken them off.
All right, so let's start. Alright, I know I've done a shocking job of filming that last bit, but we put in a massive night. Um, I have to give a big shout out to Mitch. He's, he, he went above and beyond to make sure that this was done. It's all together. I've actually been driving it the past two days. Um, and I have to say, it is so much better. And the reason why we didn't film it, one, not very entertaining things to film, just slapping stuff back on. Two, after test driving, I got back at like one in the morning. So it was a late one, we skipped dinner and everything. Um, so big shout out to Mitch, and Bailey was here for that day too, but big shout out to Mitch because he's been through it all the way. I just wanted to take you around the back to show you where the exhaust is coming out. It didn't really fit too well. So that's the exhaust, it's actually just tapping that pipe, um, that, that rear bar. It's kind of moved back a bit as I've driven, but we were really trying to keep this exhaust mount uh, to make sure it didn't rattle. To be honest, it's all right there. It's sneaky. I like it. I actually do like it. Because um, when it, we first put it here, I'm not kidding, it was like out here. It was, it was a bit insane. Um, it would have been cool to run it like that, but it would have just been munched. But yeah, that's that's kind of, kind of the best that we've got at the moment. How I've been running it while I'm updating you here is I didn't have the airbox in. I was just cruising to and from work. Um, so this is the the setup that we've had to had to deal with is just a filter snacked on the end because if you remember from the start of the video i showed you the mad fab um air box that i had made the outlet pipe it did come here like that to go straight up into the intake but now obviously it needs to go the other way so my mate darvis uh taylor you would have seen him in a few videos he drives the ranger he's actually the the welder where i work he knocked this up for me be sure as a taylor because he smashed it he actually had to notch it into the side into the corner a little bit to get it to run um there is like we could have cut here and like, gone across and made that flat and everything but we're trying to get this done quickly done an awesome job welding um this is for my air compressor so it sucks in clean air big big shout out to taylor and mad fab for making this um because it worked well when it was na um whew, it turned up the bloody all our, our living merch has turned out. Other people were getting theirs and we still didn't have ours. Big shout out to everyone who ordered merch. Um, that helps us out like a crazy amount. Pretty much I can say this turbo wouldn't be happening if I didn't, if you guys didn't buy that merch. So really, it's thanks to you guys that, that, it, that this is what it's at. So big thank you to everyone. Honestly, surpassed my expectations by four times. It's crazy. Um, anyway, I forgot where I was up to, but I'm just gonna, take that temporary stuff off and then whack this in. Hopefully it's not too difficult. I'm gonna have to do some cutting with silicon pipes and whatnot, but I think it'll be okay. I'm really excited to hear what it sounds like through that thing <laughs> because with it just like that, it's really loud and but like really nice. All right, so since that last clip, um, the airbox had to be modified even further by Davis and then it just fits. <laughs> um, probably would have been better off just making a new one but it's all up and running i don't want to go too far into it because i want to make a different video like how good a 1hz t goes i guess that's what you call it now um a turbo 1hz i've actually been driving it for a little while and i haven't had any issues at all it's definitely under tuned which is a good thing it's running 10 pounds i haven't got the egt's over 450 and that's me like absolutely flogging it trying to see how it would go this is the airbox as you can see, it just comes straight in, straight through. It's got a pod filter. The um, induction noise is very loud. So what I'm gonna do is, I'll just get some shots of it just revving, just so you can hear it. And then I'll get some in-cab shots so you can hear the snorkel. But basically you will see it in all the videos, so you will hear it a lot then. So I reckon we just go for a quick drive, 
um, just so you can hear it. That brings us to the end of the turbo build. This has been over an extremely long period of time. Pretty much, I can't really be happier. It drives so much better. It's actually better on fuel, believe it or not. I oh yeah, I forgot to mention with the tuning <laughs> side of things, we just messed around with the fuel screw, took it for a drive up some steep hills each time, saw where the EGTs are at and just went from there. We never like cranked it and then tried it it was always like little increments i probably would be better off taking it to a dyno but honestly for now it is definitely definitely under tuned but it's running fine um <laughs> it's kind of like it's liked it i guess it just seems to it revs so much easier it doesn't need to be flogged on the road to get it to go to the speed limit but yeah i think i might release another video about it all now future plans with motor wise um, I think I'm just going to leave it for now, see how we go. Um, I don't want to mess with it too much and then risk it blowing up. So honestly, right now I'm pretty happy with where it's at. I'm sure I'll get to a stage where I'll start like turn up the boost a little bit or turn up the fuel a little bit. But hey, for now it's turboed. It goes a lot better than what it did before. I reckon it sounds pretty cool. The, the induction noise is um, a bit next level. <laughs> it's, uh, a lot louder than what I thought. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed following along. I know it's kind of all over the place, this video, but that's just how it is when I work on the car because, I mean, as you can see, it's like getting dark now and I just got home from work. I guess we'll take it out on the tracks, see how the turbo goes. Um, I guess we'll find a lot of weak points <laughs> in the drive line because now it will spin things a lot faster. It should just make this car's life a lot easier. Quite happy that it managed to 
or do it all my, myself with the help of mates. Big shout out to Mitch for working on it a lot and Taylor for doing the airbox and whatnot. But yeah, keen to see how it goes. No leaks at all. So yeah, thank you all for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Catch you guys there. Cup of coffee on the coffee.